Today we're going to be looking at the Haropla Haro Loader. On the front we can see an awesomely detailed illustration of the Haropla by Morishita Naochika. Compared to all the other Haropla box arts, this stands out as the most detailed one by a long shot. On the short sides of the box we can see the same box art, the Ganda Build Divers Re-Rise logo and number 13 in the Haropla line. On the long side of the box we can see the moving claw gimmick, painted samples of the kit, the poses it can do, the second edition Haro, as well as compatibility with the high grade built custom kits. On the other side we get a short blurb about the Haro loader in both Japanese and English. Lastly, this kit was released in April 2020 and cost 1,200 yen. Now onto the runners. Here we have the A runner, both A1 and A2 sections were molded together but mine got separated when I handled it. This is a complete redesign of the insides while still retaining the older Haro Plus outward appearance. You can see here it's written as Haropla 2nd Edition. Looking at the A1 section, you can see that this has a whopping 21 gates. This means that Bandai can basically pick and choose what color to give any of these pieces as compared to the previous version. This has parts for the top half, the hands, joint covers, and some other stuff. The A2 section then has only 6 gates. It contains parts for the bottom half, the limbs, some inner sections, and the base. Here we have the B runner. It has all the orange parts of the kit that are used in the loader's torsos, arms, and legs. Lastly, we have the C runner with this C2 being a duplicate of this section on the right. And obviously, this has all the gray parts for the kit like the joints, claws, feet, etc. Lastly, we have the manual colored in one side only. On the front, we have the parts list and there doesn't seem to be any excess parts and no accompanying info about the Haro loader here. Opening it up, we can see the usual gray assembly guide, nothing noteworthy here. Onto the color side then, we can see the final form as well as the things you can do with the Haro loader. Lastly, there are no marking sheets or stickers that come with this kit. And now, onto the review. Here we have the Haro loader all snapped up and with everything that it comes with. First off, let's take a look at this, the second edition Harupla. Everything you see right now comes in one full runner, cut into two segments. All of the colors you see are separate and don't come with any stickers. To better show what's new here, I'm gonna be comparing it to the Ball Haro, one of the first edition Haro Plus. Right off the bat, there's pretty much nothing different about these two on the outside, which makes them look good when displayed together. The arm flaps open upward but unlike the older version, the middle has a 3mm hole in it that you can cover up with a peg from either the outside or the inside and this is probably for the animal ears. Covering it up from the bottom, looking at the top, the flap is pretty much flush and you won't even notice it unless you already knew it was there. However, on the other side, it's very tight and I can't seem to get it out anymore. The leg covers are removable still and comparing them they look like they're interchangeable but sadly they're not. I tried. Looking at the other accessories then, we have the hands and the design has slightly changed. This new design is a lot more stable and stays in the slot much better in comparison. Also, this seems like it's a 3mm space so you can probably hold on to high grade accessories but your mileage may vary. Looking at the limbs then, you'll see that the new version doesn't use any polycaps at all. But both are still interchangeable and still hold well. You can attach the arms and legs onto the Haro with no problem. But sadly, it just can't stand on its own because of the inherent design. Now the best part about this new Haro Plus is that the mouth opens. It opens to reveal a laptop with three peg holes on the lower mouth. The mouth joint itself is rather ingenious and works really really well and allows us to give it a huge underbite as well as close in a rather satisfying way. Alternately though, you can pretend that this is a pokeball and struggle to open it with one hand. The other differences are that there are no longer peg holes with their covers on the sides and personally those were pretty useless. Another is that Bandai changed the design of the bottom peg so that it's much easier to remove with an arrow there to indicate where to push. Lastly, the top cover peg is basically the same. Here we can see the base. It is the same, just slightly taller. It can connect with other bases. The connector is still the same and you can put the harrow on the circle. But because of that small arrow on the new bottom cover, you can feel it rub against the base. But it's not really a problem. On the bottom then, it's slightly different so that it can accommodate the new cover. Now, onto the loader. 
Looking at this right away, you just get that construction vehicle vibe from it. The orange color looks nice and bright which is nicely contrasted with the dull gray. Surprisingly, it is highly detailed for a kit like this and there are no obvious hollow parts to look at. Lastly, the overall design and aesthetic when paired with the haro just looks perfect. The kit comes with this connector piece that goes onto the bottom of the haro with two settings. If you put the connector into the studs, it keeps the harrow in place but it can still rotate freely and be easily removed from the loader. However, if you put the connector onto the sides then it securely holds the harrow in place which also allows you to open the mount easily. However, if you have the connector in the slot, it gets pretty hard to get out but you can just pull out the and remove the grey abdomen. Pull out the connector, then reassemble. Speaking of the abdomen, this is just a ball joint that you can rotate or pull out and get some ab crunches out of. The legs are also on ball joints, it can rotate, move about freely to a degree, and the back legs can close down. It looks nice but I don't see any point in it unless you put it in the air. The bottom of the feet actually has good detail but there are just fake wheels here. Two slits here are for the action base connector and it simply just pegs in there. As for the legs, I prefer to keep them both in and parallel, all four points touching the ground. These three peg holes on the front are the only ones on the legs. I would have liked if there were some more here at the side of the legs themselves and at the back. However, this goes for the entire kit as well as there is a huge lack of peg holes on the entire loader. At the back then, we get five pegs and we can remove this part to reveal double peg holes which should be compatible with high grade backpacks that you can totally use. Now looking at the arm, the shoulder joint is connected here with that huge peg. It can only go up that far and can swivel here but it's also interchangeable with the Haropla mobile harrow. The shoulder armor moves independently but is blocked by the arm but if you move the arm then it can go this far. Uniquely for this kit, the arm's ladder detail here is actually both a raised and an engraved detail which is also replicated on the other side. The shoulder joint then is just connected to the arm. It can rotate and move up and down but it also has a moving track in the arm. However, there's a problem with this shoulder peg in that it's just too short and because of that the arm is very easy to remove by accident. The claws then are on their own joint swivels at a complete 180 and with a swivel here. And finally, the claws have an awesome opening gimmick that is very unique. As you can see by flipping this one lever, the entire claw opens and this mechanism is just so ingenious and opens really well but sadly the lever doesn't work as well as in reverse. Alternately, you can close it back up by pushing it down here by the roots of the claws. Looking at the inner workings of this claw, you can just see that there are tracks that facilitate movement in one direction which allows a single lever to move the entire mechanism. Looking at the claws themselves, they look nice but don't expect them to hold anything Thing as it's quite bad at that. Don't forget that it's only meant to look cool and not actually hold stuff. Size comparison then, here it is next to the Core Gundam and the Origin Granddaddy Gundam. And lastly, here it is next to the Ball Harrow. The weak shoulder joint is simply the worst part of this kit and could have easily been better but compared to the Harrow itself, the loader and the gimmicky claw, the kit is well worth the 1200 yen. However, for 1200 yen, you can instead buy a high grade of the Leo, the RX-78 Revive, the Dagger L, or a Core Gundam 2 instead, which are, in my opinion, better bangs for your buck compared to this. All in all, if you're just into Gundams or Zakos, then this is a pass for you. But it is very cheap and easy to build, and is pretty fun toy overall. Yes, I said toy. Because Bandai marketed and made this like a toy and it should be treated as such. That's all from me. I'll see you guys next time and don't forget to subscribe for more full reviews.